Hi, welcome. Today we are going to study the important point, third law of thermodynamics. See, let us start with the statement of third law of thermodynamics. Statement is at absolute zero, the entropy of a pure crystal is also zero. That is, S is equal to zero. So S is the notation used for the entropy. So S is equal to zero at T is equal to zero Kelvin. So this is very important statement. At absolute zero, the entropy of a pure crystal is also zero. That is S is zero at T is equal to zero Kelvin. So uh, let us see with this diagram. So see here, there is a zero Kelvin temperature. If you consider this system, this system, it is a perfect system. Okay. If you consider this system, which is at low temperature, that system has some molecular vibration. So at zero Kelvin, there are no molecular vibrations, but when we increase temperature, but at low temperature, molecule has some molecular vibrations and if we increase temperature more, then molecule has higher molecular vibrations. So what is the observation here? So in this case, at zero Kelvin, entropy is zero. Then at lower temperature, it has some entropy and at higher temperature, the entropy is again more. Okay, so this is about the statement of third law of thermodynamics. Now, uh, there can be one question in your mind that what is mean by entropy? Okay, so now we will see what is entropy. See, entropy, which is denoted by S, yes, it is a measure of disorder or randomness of a system. Entropy is a measure of disorder or randomness of a system. Now, suppose here, if we have this system, okay, this system is ordered, okay, when we look at this system, it looks ordered. Now, if it undergoes some changes and looks like this, so this is disordered, this is ordered and if it undergoes some changes, it become disordered. So when we go from ordered system to disordered system, there is increase in entropy. Okay, there is increase in entropy. So the entropy, it is a measure of disorder or randomness of a system. Whenever molecule become more disordered, entropy get increased. So this is the uh, relation of entropy with the third law that at absolute zero, the entropy of a pure crystal is also zero. So at uh, absolute zero, the system becomes perfect. Okay, there is a uh, no randomness in the system. So the entropy is become also zero. So this is about the third law. Now we have to consider important point importance of the third law. So this is a, a long expression. You have to uh, study it carefully. See what is the important. The importance is calculation of absolute entropies. From the third law, we can calculate absolute entropies. See, the infinitesimal entropy change is given by ds is equal to dq upon t. Okay, you have to remember this equation, the infinitesimal, infinitesimal means very, very small. Entropy change is given by ds and that ds is equal to dq upon t. But uh, in the one of the previous lecture, we have studied that Cp is equal to dq upon dt. Cp it is the Cp it is the heat capacity at constant pressure. So Cp is equal to dq upon dt. So on rearranging we get dq is equal to Cp dt. So we have to substitute value of dq into this equation one. So it become ds is equal to Cp dt upon t. Okay. So 
we now get this equation ds is equal to cp dt upon t now we have to integrate this equation between the limits for entropy c s0 to s for the temperature 0 to t so integration of ds from s is equal to s0 to s and temperature t is equal to t is equal to 0 to t is equal to t so it will give us that integration of ds s minus s0 is equal to integration of cp dt 0 to t where s0 is the entropy of the substance at absolute 0 and s is the entropy of the substance at temperature t okay so when t is equal to 0 entropy is s0 when t is uh, temperature is t at that time entropy is s now we have seen recently that according to th third law of thermodynamics s0 is equal to 0 okay the value of entropy of a perfectly uh, crystalline solid is 0 so here remain only s t so s t is equal to integration 0 to t of cp into dt upon t so it will give us integration 0 to t cp d ln of t so this is equation uh, third now c uh, remember that equation s t is equal to integration 0 to t cp d ln of t so the entropy s yes of the substance at temperature t can be calculated from the measurements of heat capacities that is cp at a number of temperature between 0 kelvin to t kelvin okay now the integral in equation 3 so this is equation 3 integral in this equation can be evaluated by plotting cp versus ln of t we have to plot cp versus ln of t so this is the graph cp versus ln of t or here t and here log of t okay so that is uh, ln of t it is the 2.303 into log of t and then measuring the area under the curve between t is equal to 0 to t is equal to t as shown in the figure okay now if cp is supposed to remain constant in the temperature range 0 to t kelvin our temperature range is 0 to t kelvin and if we suppose that that cp remains constant then our equation third this is our equation third can be simplified to s is equal to cp ln of t so we can write s is equal to instead of ln t we can write 2.303 into log of t so our equation become s is equal to 2.303 cp log of t so this equation helps us to calculate the value of s that is entropy directly from the values of cp and t so from the values of cp and t we can calculate the value of entropy that is s now however heat capacities that is cp cannot be measured with accuracy below a temperature of 15 kelvin we cannot measure heat capacities accurately below the temperature of 15 kelvin thus the part cb of the curve is experimental curve using values of cp so the curve is extrapolated to get the value at 0 kelvin between the range 0 to 15 kelvin heat capacity is obtained by debay t cubed law so debay's t cubed law is cp is equal to a t cube now uh, don't get confused what uh, we have to remember here that we cannot measure heat capacity with accuracy below a temperature of 15 kelvin so in that case that debay's t cubed law help us so debay gives us relation cp is equal to a t cube so this relation will help us now we have to see how it help us see in that equation cp is equal to a t cube a is a constant 
it is determined from the value of c cp at some low temperature now let t1 be the temperature above which capacity can be measured this correspond to the point b in figure that figure c correspond to the temperature t at which the entropy of the solid is to be determined so in the figure 1.6 point a corresponds to zero kelvin the integral in equation 1.5 can be split as under so what we have to do we have to do integral in equation 1.5 so our 1.5 means this is our uh, third equation okay we have to split its integral so we will get st is equal to integral so we have to split that uh, range of zero to t into the 0 to t1 and t1 to t okay we, what we have done we have splitted that range of 0 to t into 0 to t1 and t1 to t so what we get st is equal to integral 0 to t1 cp dt upon t plus integral t1 to t so this is our splitting cp into dt upon t now if you consider this first integral in this equation it can be calculated as c that integral is equal to integration we have put the value of cp that is a t cube dt upon t okay so uh, that t and this 1 t will get cancelled so here remain integral 0 to t1 a t square dt so after solving that integral we will get 1 upon 3 a t1 cube a t cube so a t1 1 upon 3 into a t1 cube so the delta s1 is equal to 1 third cp at t1 temperature so by th this is the value of this integral okay now see The second integral in equation 1.8 can be evaluated by graphical method. Cp is plotted versus ln t. The area under the curve between the limits t1 and t gives the value of the integral. Therefore, entropy of the solid between 0 kelvin and t kelvin is given by. So, st is equal to 1 upon 3 Cp at t1 plus the second integral as it is integral t1 to t Cp d ln of t. Okay, we can evaluate by graphical method. So, this is our equation. Now, if there is some allotropic change between the temperature range 0 Kelvin to T Kelvin, then the entropy of transition delta HT upon T is added in this equation. So, we have HT is equal to 1 upon 3 Cp at T1 plus integration T1 to T Cp d ln of t plus delta ht upon tt why uh, we have added delta ht upon t we have considered if there are some allotropic change between the temperature range that is 0 to t kelvin so this is our final equation ht is equal to one third cp at t1 plus integral t1 to t cp d ln of t plus delta ht upon tt okay now this is for the solid substance that equation now for liquid and gaseous substance what is happening there see the total absolute entropy of the substance at given temperature will be the total of all the entropy changes which the substance undergoes in order to reach that particular state starting from the crystalline solid at absolute zero okay so initially our substance is crystalline solid and we have to calculate absolute entropy for the liquid and gaseous substance so we have to total get total of all the entropy changes so if a substance is gaseous at one atmospheric pressure and 25 degree celsius the entropy of the gas at 25 degree celsius will be the sum of the following entropies involved at different stages now see carefully there are one two three four this is one two three four and five so we have to consider five 
stages first stage is the the entropy of heating the crystalline solid from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to tm that is the melting point we have to consider that entropy then second is delta hm upon tm the entropy of melting where delta hm is latent heat of melting third one is the entropy of heating the liquid from tm to tb that is boiling point fourth one is the entropy of vaporization that is delta hv upon tb where hv is latent heat of vaporization and fifth one is the entropy of heating the gas from tb to 25 degree celsius that is 298 kelvin so these all five stages we have to add together so for liquid and gaseous substances all these five stages we have to add together so we get entropy s is equal to this is first stage integration 0 to tm cp of solid d ln of t then plus second c delta hm upon tm then third tm integral tm to tb cp of l d ln of t then fourth delta hv upon tb plus then five integration of tb to t cp of g d ln of t so all these five terms we have to add together to get entropies for liquid and gaseous substance okay i know that uh, this point is somewhat uh, difficult to understand but if you uh, write down all these uh, stages or all these equations in your notebook clearly then and uh, read again and again two to three times so you will able to understand what is actually given so here are uh, some limitations for me to explain uh, these things on uh, blackboard uh, we can understand it uh, very clearly but here some limitations are there but you try to write all these steps in your notebook okay so the, this is the importance of third law what is its importance it is useful for the calculation of absolute entropies so we have calculated absolute entropy of the solid so this is equation for the solid and for liquid and gases this is our equation okay so this is the importance of third law of thermodynamics and again there is now one question one problem is there what is the difficulty in determining absolute entropy of a substance how has the problem been solved by debay so as I have uh, explained it earlier that the problem, uh, the difficulty in determining absolute entropy of a substance was that the we cannot determine the values below the temperature of 15 Kelvin. Okay, heat capacity that low temperatures that is less than 15 Kelvin cannot be determined. The problem was solved by Debye, who gave third power law for heat capacities of solids according to which cp is equal to 80 cube okay so this is about the third law of thermodynamics and its importance so uh, this is the uh, very longer lecture compared to the previous lecture though it is understand too difficult i have suggested you all of you that write down that equation clearly into your notebook so and after reading or writing two to three times you will understand all the equations and terms involved in it thank you for the uh, watching this lecture thank you